Hello and welcome to another big edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And why is it big? Because we have a chance right now to talk to our own Larry Hedrick about his experiences with Apache Land. What was your involvement in moving Apache Land, or what was left of it, over to the Superstition Mountain Museum? Well, in 2004, Apache Land burned to the ground. And uh, Mrs. Schillerman, who is now Mrs. Birmingham, Sue Birmingham, donated the chapel to us, the Elvis Presley Chapel that was used in Charo. And in that film, they moved the chapel almost 100 yards closer to town and then put it back where it was. They put a fake steeple on it and blew it up with the, with the cannon and all that sort of thing. She wanted to do what she called the last sundown, using the chapel that was still there after the fire as this gathering of everybody to say goodbye to Apache land. And it was a nice event, but it cost us about two weeks uh, before we could start disassembling the town and, and taking it over to the museum. And so it was late, it was January before we got going. And uh, that had been about 2005. Yeah, but that's a big deal, moving that all the way from where Apache Land was to the museum. How did you do that? We were given 60 days to remove anything out of Apache Land that we wanted, except we were told to leave the rock house alone, you know. Uh, they had new owners there, and they were informed that we were going to be taking all this stuff out of there. And start, stuff started disappearing while we were moving to town and they were kind of blaming us for taking some things that we maybe weren't supposed to take. But uh, I'll explain just a little bit later how that all worked out. But we started stripping the outside off the chapel, board by board. We really didn't have to mark them because the boards with the slope of the roof the boards were each a different length and they had to go right back on where they came off. And many people that, uh, that knew the town well re were looking at pi old pictures they had and said, well, even the knot holes are right where they used to be, you know? <laughs> and um, so Hank Brown and I were mostly responsible. We both had boom trucks. And uh, of course I had a, a flatbed trailer. And a little later I asked her about the barn and she said, well, we were gonna, we're gonna build a house across the road and we want to use the trusses out of the barn in the house. But uh, she told me a little later that the architect said, no, there's no way we can use those. So I said, I want that barn. And she donated the barn to the museum. So for the next 60 days, that's all we did was out there uh, t tearing everything down and we were very careful about how we did it. Uh, to get some help, uh, I had uh, I used to work for Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, and I knew about the probation departments and stuff. Of course, we were in a different county, but I called the probation department in Pinell County, and they sent us uh, 12 guys for two weekends, and they stripped that barn down in no time. And uh, at first they were wrecking it, <laughs> and I had to stop them and uh, explain that we're trying to save this stuff. So they were more careful about it. And uh, with the boom trucks, we were able to take all the trusses down off out of the barn and uh, transport them over to the museum. And then we just had big piles of stuff all over the museum grounds. We were working on the stamp mill when all this started and we had to stop the work with the stamp mill. And well, Larry, uh, knowing you and how you build things or reconstruct things, I'm sure they're much better constructed now than they were when they were out at Apache Land. The, the chapel was so poorly constructed, it was just no two two befores were the same distance apart, you know. Uh, it, it, was, it was horrible. We decided that we couldn't really salvage anything except the front foyer that we took off in one piece, the, uh, the steeple we took off in one piece uh, using a huge forklift uh, from the contractor that was building the new museum. And, um, uh, the rest of it we just pretty well abandoned. Even the roofing had been coated over with tar to stop leaks and stuff. It just so much stuff it wasn't salvageable that uh, we, we rebuilt the chapel with all new 
framing. And then we just put the skin back on it and the steeple and the foyer and all that type of stuff. The barn was on uh, 24 centers, 24 inch centers on the rafters. And we created new 12 new rafters to um, bring it back to 16 inches because the barn roof had collapsed at one time uh, and it would all caved in on itself and they had to rebuild it, but it was still on 24 inch centers. And the uprights, we used telephone poles that they had out in the parking lot. They were almost new and we used telephone poles for the uprights. So that barn's gonna last forever. And uh, the steeple only had um, three spikes holding it on. I don't know how the, uh, some of these summer windstorms kept from blowing that steeple off of there. But uh, we put that back on with heavy three quarter inch bolts. And uh, I tell you, if a tornado comes along and takes that chapel, that steeple's gonna stay up there. <laughs> Everything was put back just as strong as we could make it and to last as long as we could. Um, we, we were told uh, by certain people on the board that, well, you know, Larry, you can't do things like you're thinking about doing them. We, you've, got, you've got permits to do, you've got inspections to do and all that kind of stuff. Well, one of the volunteers that were working with us was a former contractor and he drew up his own set of blueprints and they were perfect. So Hank and I went down to Pinell County and um, uh, showed him these prints. Uh, we, we sat down with the two top guys. I, wanted to, I said, I wanna to talk to the two top guys you got down here that deals with this. And they only made one red line on, on the blueprint. They didn't like the beams that we had going across the lofts. So my son worked at Lowell's and they were throwing away some H, steel H beams that were really long and we used H beams for the supports in, on the lofts. And that was the only thing that was changed and they waived all the permits and everything. And so we put that thing up with just uh, volunteer labor that uh, one guy was out there one day from one of the trailer courts, he had a winter visitor and, uh, and he wanted to help. And we got seven guys out of his court that came out and helped put all this stuff back together. And uh, that's, that's the story of reconstructing uh, Apache land at the Superstition Mountain Museum. One more thing before we stop here, Larry, you said you were gonna go back and tell us what happened to the stolen items at Apache land when you were out there dismantling the barn and the church. What, uh, finish that story for us. Down at the rock house, things began disappearing and uh, the windmill was suddenly gone. And the new owners came up and, and were blaming us about it. And also the chandelier that was in the chapel was now down in, in the, the general store uh, locked in and it disappeared. And uh, Mr. Birmingham was uh, concerned about that. And not that we weren't supposed to have it, but the doors were left unlocked and everything. And I, and I said, well, we had been in there, but the doors were never locked. and. Um, it turns out that um, uh, this, this fella has died, but I'm not gonna mention his name. Uh, he had gotten up on the windmill and stole the, the blades, the whole thing. And another fella was with him and took a picture of him doing it. And they had a falling out and he gave me the picture with this guy standing up there taking it down. And I called Pinell County Sheriff's Department and we went out to where he lived and got it back and also run across several other things that came from Apache land that was out there. And we loaded them all up and took them back to the museum. <laughs> thanks, Larry. Big special thanks to you for sharing your stories about Apache land. Just goes to show that Larry is not just another pretty face as he talks to us about all those mysteries up there in the Superstition Mountains. <laughs>